Um, so today we're gonna see uh, about this thing, uh, the indoor shoot. But before that, we're gonna complete this photo tutorial. Uh, so what you can see over here is a memory card content. Always, when the moment you attend, uh, attach the memory card, it's gonna open up, right? So, uh, so normally uh, all the camera information will be stored in the DCIM folder. It will be relative of uh, you using your camera uh, from your mobile or from the Digicam or from your DSLR. So it's gonna save in the same folder. Okay. So once you go inside that, you're gonna get uh, the detail about the camera. So it says 5300, D5300 is nothing but the version number of your camera. Okay. So just go inside that and you'll see all the pictures you should take in. Okay. There are two types of pictures over here. One is called a JPEG picture which has a lower size and the other one is called the, uh, the raw picture which has a higher size of the uh, file okay so uh, anyone knows like what's the difference between J the jpeg and a raw file jpeg is a compressed so not all colors is like that okay this is what my understanding is okay anyone else so it's like a raw file contains all the data and we can uh, you choose the settings later on, but uh, JPEG is captured only for a specific setting. Yeah, that's very true. <coughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Same? Yeah, yeah, whatever you said is right. Um, so we discussed about it, right? The basic. Okay, so w as we discussed earlier, so our file is going to be a native formatted. You remember the example I gave for the native? What, what native is for example um, when uh, when a person uh, cooks right he cooks always spicy he always likes spicy stuff but not everyone does why if you check it out one of the reasons could be that he is from uh, his native you know in their their people you know eat spicy stuff probably he's from Andhra okay so Andhra people eat a lot of spicy stuff so they tend to add more um, more spicy to their food okay so what this means is like when people come from a background uh, and uh, they are originated from there they, they, they bring their original quality of their background okay that's what nativity belongs to if you see america america Amer uh, what is the native of america who is a native of america it's a question who is native of America? Like, which people are natives to America? The natives are the people like uh, the Red Indians, right? So you must have seen it in the history and all. Red Indians were the one who first belongs to America, right? And then a lot of changes happened there. Okay. So what is, what does that native means? Native means people from their origin who brings up their culture. Uh, their um, their taste and other stuff with them. So the same thing happens. For every camera <coughs> when it takes a picture, it takes a picture in the native resolution, in the native format. Okay. So which the camera is designed to take. Okay. But the JPEGs, on the other hand, uh, what happens is like uh, by default when you go for a lower end camera. Okay. Uh, beginner end camera. They give you a memory card which is smaller. It's like a complementary thing to you. They give you 8 GB, uh, 2 GB. Before and all, they used to give 2 GB memory card. Now they give you 8 GB memory card. In future, they will be giving 16 GB as the minimum. One is the reason that the uh, the manufacturing um, you know amount of this memory card is higher, like because they manufacture uh, in a larger scale for these uh, uh, memory types, and it becomes cheaper for them to give it as complementary. Okay. And number two is that the data of the images okay so the data of the storage for example you try to give the AGB memory card when you buy a uh, 810 d810 like it's very expensive camera you try to give AGB but that's not enough because AGB of uh, data uh, for 810 d810 is not enough because that raw file itself creates about for uh, somewhere around 50 to 60 MB of a raw file okay so it's not uh, 
quite uh, you know intelligent to give such a complimentary. They go for either they go for bags and accessories like that rather than giving a memory card. Okay, so that that's the difference between the why we get this kind of memory card. First one, that's the first reason. Second reason being is like if you notice, um, you you see this. Um, the J J JPEG file, right? The JPEG file is nothing but whatever you create in the RAW file basically extracts to a JPEG file. So whenever we see a JPEG file, it means nothing but uh, whatever the RAW file is, it extracts from that, it extracts certain qualities, okay? It adds a little bit of cover, okay? If you see the difference between the same RAW, RAW file and the same JPEG file, you can see JPEG file will have more color than the RAW file itself. I mean, to tell you about that, so I can open a file like this one. So uh, normally to compare two files, right, we just take the file name and put it on the search. So this, what it does is like it gives you two formatted files. Now you see that resolution is the same, but the size is different. Now how is that possible? Because it's raw and one is, one is raw and one is. Because this contains all the information about the picture, this doesn't. Okay, the moment you zoom in the first second, it starts to break because the pixel densities are very less <coughs> in this, uh, I mean, uh, the, the bit rates, we call it. So basically, the, the size of the image basically maintains the bit rate. So the moment you start to zoom in, it starts to lose the bit rate and you go inside every pixel, it pixel starts to break, but not for the raw file. But you can check the difference, so I'm just opening both the files over here. Now you can see that it takes so much time to load, okay? But it loads instantly. And you see that difference? Same file, but you see the difference. Here is more uh, edited kind of thing. But I, I, I didn't touch the editing part of this picture. Okay, now you can see that there is no editing part done over here or either here. It just when it exports itself, it exports in some kind of a non-legible base that okay this picture might not look when you export it like the same way the picture was taken so let me edit it a little bit the camera itself understands a little bit brightens up and gives you as a jpeg image there are options in your camera where you can set only jpeg image there are options in your camera where you can set both raw and jpeg and there are options in your camera you can only set the raw image so you have three different types of option in uh, the but a uh, basic JPEG itself, you have basic JPEG, you have medium JPEG, and you have high JPEG. High JPEG or large JPEG means like more amount of uh, you know uh, details in the JPEG picture. Medium means medium amount of detail. So the file size might vary. So the the small images would be around 1.9 uh, MB, 1.6, 1.7 depends on the, the amount of colors in the picture and the brightness and darkness. And uh, also this. When you go for medium, you get like 4 MB or something. When you go for high, you get 9 MB or something. Okay. But raw file has more data than that. Like you can see, it goes 20, 23 MB for a D5300. D5300 is, is not a great camera. It's a, on the lower end camera, but it itself creates each file of 23 MB. By default, all the lower end cameras are, ca uh, are configured in a way that it can only capture a JPEG image. So the moment you mount the memory card, you will see 1.5K, 3.5K, sometimes 8K also pictures you can record. So the lower the quality you go to, the higher the pictures you can store because that much of the space you would get. Okay, But if you go the other way around, even if you go for a higher amount of quality, then obviously the number of pictures you can store in the memory card is lesser. Okay, So it goes opposite. Okay. So that's that's the thing about memory card. That's how we can compare the pictures. Okay. So now we know which picture we need to edit. Okay. Now we know which which picture we need to edit. So right click on that. You can open two tools to do that. It's all paid tool. Uh, one is called Photoshop. Another one is called Lightroom. Okay. Lightroom is basically a bulk editing tool. When you want to edit a picture in bulk, like uh, you have uh, going for a wedding and you have like hundred pictures all together, or even thousand pictures. Okay. So what you do is like you open all these pictures in Lightroom. Unlike Photoshop, Lightroom doesn't take forever. Okay, if you open 10 pictures in Photoshop, that's enough for your computer. Okay, but if you open 1000 pictures, you still your computer can survive. If you have a decent uh, processor and uh, memory, you know, enough memory for your computer. 
So my, my configuration for this computer is quite high. So uh, it's a fifth generation, uh, no, third generation i7 processor uh, and uh, it's a 64 bit operating system. And uh, you can see that it is, um, um, it, it, is uh, it has like uh, 12 GB of RAM and it does quite a processing. Like it has a graphical also for processing images. With this processing capability itself, I cannot go more than 20 images in Photoshop. Okay, either my disk runs out or the memory runs out. Okay, so you have to be a bit careful about uh, opening pictures in Photoshop because Photoshop demands much higher configuration. Okay, so uh, let me open this with Photoshop as I've already opened this with uh, open Photoshop. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it there. Okay, so I've dragged and drop, dropped it, uh, the picture over here. So you can click on auto to do auto corrections over here, or you can go to default. Default in the sense, like, however, it has been clicked. Okay, so here you have the histogram, it tells you the white and black combinations and other colors which you can see over here. So, uh, I would suggest you go for either the ends, see how the both the ends looks like. Okay and then go to something in the middle okay go to auto okay see if uh, auto enhances your picture quality then adjust a bit so you can take the, uh, the first one first column is exposure exposure you can go darker exposure you can see that the histogram goes darker or you can go to brighter exposure okay it is vital that you should put in the middle so if you're lost somewhere you don't know what to do just click on auto again so it will come back to you okay the background looks fine to me, uh, though I don't. We don't have any cover on the background, right? So I'll teach you how to take uh, with this kind of a background without having a back poster or something, backdrop or something. Um, okay, so that's one thing. Uh, exposure. Next is contrast. Contrast is basically tells you how much uh, the picture should look like. It should be like a little bit darker and nicer or you want it to be a brighter picture okay so whichever you feel good you know it's personal preference there's nothing much to do with contrast can you go on the other end in extreme okay. okay so contrast is your again your personal preference okay how you want that picture to look like okay the next one is highlights so it highlights is basically on the light side hmm? there are two light sides and two dark sides to this exposure doesn't count okay so two light sides are like highlights and whites and uh, two dark sides are shadows and blacks, okay? So basically you can hold Alt when you are adjusting this and you can see the actual uh, what happens behind the scene, okay? This is what happens. So you have to hold the Alt button to check it out what, what is the reaction. The moment you release it, you can see the actual picture. Now you don't see that it's pretty highlighted right so when you hold on alt you can see that actually it's highlighted in that area okay so just close over now you can see that it's totally uh, dulled you can zoom in to our face also to check out how the highlights works okay so this is the thing um, okay so next is shadows Shadows are basically removing the shadows, adding more shadows. Removing the shadows means it will remove all the shadows on the person's face. Or adding more means it will add more shadows. You can see that on the sides, how it affects. Okay. Whites basically uh, the amount of white in the picture. So hold Alt to see the white in the picture. So now more white. Now look at this picture. Right. So just take it off and you will see no whites in the picture. Okay, so there are whites over here. You can even control whites a little bit later also. Okay, it's not that you should push it to this level. Oh, there are so much whites, so I'll just go closer. No, it doesn't work that way. We go closer, it spoils the picture quality. So just go uh, maximum 70% to either the sides. Don't go beyond 70% it might kill the picture. Okay, because you have other scales you can adjust shall teach you later so the blacks this is for the blacks so more blacks all become white it become less black and more black on the side so you have more blacks and less black again don't go beyond 70 percentage grades just be in the middle so because blacks are good for us 
Yeah. So this is clarity. Uh, you can soften a picture or you can make it more clarity. So just see the difference. Softening and uh, clarity. Again, don't go beyond 70% because it looks unnatural. So it's like, it's just 10 percentage you can see the softness. Is that related to smoothing is related to sharpness? Yeah, clarity. clarity. You have separate uh, sharpness also. Uh, there also you can even make it more if you want. And vibrance is basically the color. Uh, yeah, but it gives you more color to a color. Saturation on the other hand, saturating the color more. Like you can see that it saturates the color. Okay. So do not give more saturation. I will not give more than 4 or 5. I give more vibrance like 20 or something. Because vibrance is more of a color. It highlights every color in the picture. So that's good. But saturation gets you to saturate every color in the picture. And it looks very unnatural. Okay. So uh, on the top you have the white balance, you have, uh, something which you can set in the camera itself. But if you don't do it in camera, you can do it here also, there is no problem. The same settings which you can do in camera, which you can do over here. Okay, so I wouldn't recommend any settings in the camera, I would leave it at auto itself. I'll come over here, okay, I'll click on as shot, as shot by my camera, and just myself. The white balance or the any White balance. White balance I'm talking about. So, so I will make sure that she looks natural. So in camera you set You don't need to set it. I let it at auto. In white balance only. Uh, in white balance, you put it as auto white balance. It will automatically adjust it. Because I have the option of coming over here and tuning it. Okay. There are two settings like that. First is called white balance. Another one is called color uh, picture control or color control. Okay, there's two options. Okay, these two options you can do it in your camera or you can come over here and do it at the time of editing. Okay, the second option which I've talked about the picture control is over here. You have the camera, right? Camera calibration. So, in your camera calibration, you have the picture control here mm -hmm. or color pro camera profiles. The same profile will be there in your camera also. Okay, so no matter you use a Canon or a Nikon, you will have the same options over here. Yeah. So this is something which you will get at the time of adjusting the um, Photoshop. Only okay. if you take in draw. Only if you take in draw format, you can adjust it over here, or else you can you have to adjust it in your camera for JPEG files. Okay, so that's the first setting. First setting. Okay, the second setting is the tone curve. There are two methods of adjusting the tone curve. This is the tone curve. Uh, you can just do uh, parametric or point. So point means like you can hold it anywhere and drag it up and down. Okay. So as I said to you, the right side is light and left side is dark. Remember that. So if I'm gonna, uh, if I add, uh, if I wanna add more light here. So what I have to do is like I have to go up. Because it adds more light. Okay. If I want to less the light, I touch the same point, I go less. You can also go anywhere in this point and do the changes. Okay. In this so instance, you can dark. light, what about the x-axis? <coughs> This is darkness. And then, what about this? No, it won't. You cannot go up and down. I mean, you cannot. The, the curve has to turn. You're getting it, right? So, you turn like this or like this. There are only two options. You can see that it falls down. Okay. But you can manually control this by going to, uh, by going to point. But you can automatically control it by going to parametric. For example, uh, here you have highlights, right? So you can increase the highlight and decrease it. So the moment you increase it, you can see that only this part gets increased. Okay? You decrease it, only that part gets decreased. 
Okay, so likewise you can control it manually. Okay, so I just put it on zero. And then here lights. Lights is like the second part of this diagram. Okay, and shadows will be third, mm -hmm. and uh, blacks will be last one. Okay, so you can specifically take each one of this and modify it. That's why I said there is some light on her face. If you see, uh, there is some light on her face over here, right? You can adjust this light. You can highlight. You can reduce the highlight. So you can see that it's gone. You can even uh, reduce the lights. See that it's gone now. More or less, increase the darks. Shadows are fine, I think. Yeah, well, it's fine, right? So do not just uh, you know go around this, guys, because. Uh, this is one of the settings okay you can even reduce the highlights over here to get it up because this is not even 70% so you can reduce it okay just increase a little bit of white okay so that it comes same and then you go over here and then do the ch changes here as well okay and then these are two methods you can control the brightness in the settings the next one is the detail or the sharpness okay uh, the amount of sharpness you want in the picture so you can increase the radius of the sharpness you can increase the detail of the sharpness okay you can use masking as well masking is more or less like a, you know a spreading of the sharp from the area okay so basically that one is over here so let's do it with the normal one if you don't want sharpness at all you just go other side so you can get like blurred image kind of thing Okay, so let's keep it as medium. This is noise reduction. When you're taking in higher ISOs, this noise reduction is required. So there will be a lot of dots in the picture, so you can increase the luminance. And then you can increase the luminance contrast. So only that dot areas will be highlighted. But we don't have anything like this. We don't have uh, a problem with our stuff, with our uh, uh, ISO settings. So we are totally fine with this setting. Okay. So this is for noise reduction, this is for sharpening. And the next is for grayscale. Like there are three options over here. These are controlling colors. Like it can only select individual colors. For example, uh, with the lips colors, probably I think this one. No, it's not this. It's not this either. So if the color is not available, it should be available somewhere. So you can see that. Something is changing yeah so this is for selecting a specific color but you need to be very specific which color you want to select only that color gets affected not anything else okay okay so if that color is not available just check on saturation that color might be here if it is not available check on luminous it might be here but for sure uh, it will be there so each point on the picture it will detect the color and you can change that okay but you can do it later also inside photoshop inside of photoshop also you can do the same thing okay so you can also convert to grayscale okay so that's an option over there and this is flip toning this is on a specific color how much you, hue you want to add saturation on a specific color you know you can add that and you can uh, balance the shadows shadow colors and all those <coughs> things you can do there's three options now she has that lip color yeah you change that lip color yes okay and uh, this just imagine that the same color will be on her dress ah, then it will also change okay okay that will also change say for example this uh, red color is there right see that okay. changes there also okay uh, all the colors in that area will change if you're doing it from here but once you go inside Photoshop okay. and then doing it from there, you can select the color and do it, modify it only that particular area. Uh, this is Lightroom. Huh? This is Photoshop. So what is this editing and uh, This is this tool. This is this tool, camera raw tool okay. for editing raw pictures. Okay, the entire picture. Uh, but if you open JPEG, right, it will come in a different format. I will show you. Okay, so what you are doing it in just another raw? 
Ah, only Ra comes with this mode. Mm. Okay. If you are using JPEG, it will come in different mode. I'll show you how it comes. Okay. So only the Ra has this feature where you can edit all these informations in this level. Okay. So if I click only a Raw picture, then I'll have to first edit it. Yeah. Then yeah. No. 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 First, you have to edit uh, this information. This mm -hmm. is called uh, um, this is called uh, raw information. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what happens. Just, just be patient. Okay. So I'll tell you what happens after doing this. Okay. When you click on open image. Okay. So this is a chromatic operation. So when you find an image which is like round or blocked or something like that. Then you need to remove chromatic operations. <coughs> so you can use this button to remove chromatic operations and to enable profiler, profile correction. Profile correction is an automatic tool where it automatically understands which make model of the lens and what kind of a profile collection correction it needs to do for that lens. It's an automatic setting. Okay. If you don't want it to do automatic. Disable this and go to manual. But that will help us. Uh, you anyone has eighteen fifty five lens here? Eighteen fifty five. Please give me. Can you come closer? It's pretty dark. We need to increase the ISO. I'm breaking two images, okay? So we're taking it in auto, auto mode. It doesn't matter. It's just a testing. Okay. Um, so, now what you guys are going to do is like, you're going to check these two images and tell me the difference between the first image and the second image. The first one and the second one, no? Ah. Huh. Second and the second one. How? Yeah, that's much brighter. The sharpness is good. Huh. The contrast is pretty good. It's pretty well balanced picture. Mm-hmm. Okay. Give me the memory card. I'll show this picture on the computer. <coughs> Let's see if we identify the difference at least then.
They are only JPEGs. Mm. I have it all, sir. Both I have, not plus JPEG. I have it all. So by just looking at the pictures, you come to know whether it's a JPEG or... Size of the picture. Uh, See the size. I told before. Size, the size difference. This is JPEG, of course, because it's 5.5 MB. It's 21 MB, of course. And also, one more thing is like it has the same name. See that? Both has the same name. How can a file can have the same name? Ah, uh, but. Uh, because you of know different know extension. JPEG also, the contents are very better resolution and uh, size matters less. No, size is very less, no? Even though resolution is the same, but size is very less. Okay, so which means like uh, the details are not there. That's what it means. Okay. Yeah, the size, size is big, and obviously the content of that size will also be huge. The content will be huge, right? <coughs> That's when the size can of a file can be big. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can put lot of space or lot of junk characters and make the size big, right? I mean, I've seen people just want to make the file size bigger. So what they do is like they put lot of junk characters. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. Uh, you're aware of torrents? No, no, no. Everyone? So what happens is like when a new movie comes, exactly. yes. what they do? They, Just upload. they no, they upload the old movie or uh, the three times of the old movie, make that particular file bigger and upload it with the new movie's name. Yeah. So what people will think, oh, the new movie has come as a big print. So they download the torrent. And the moment they download the torrent and they understand, oh, all this 8 GB for this same movie, old movie again and again, so someone cheated us, right? So just by inflating the file, we can still get to the bigger size. But inside that, it could be junk, okay? That means bigger size. But here in the camera raw, what happens is like it inflates the file by giving more details, the relative details to the picture. Not like faking it out, but relative details. But in terms of JPEG, it doesn't do that because it exports the file, JPEG file from the raw image. Uh, now if you see the raw image format of this one, okay, it's called uh, CR2, yeah? But in, uh, when you go for Nikon, it's NEF file, NEF. NEF, yes. Right? So that's the different formats, extensions. Okay. But the file name will be the same. Okay, so in this way also you can identify which is the one which is that one. Now, just observe this picture carefully. So these are the two pictures <coughs> just taken, correct? Observe the picture carefully. Anything else is wrong. Still, if you don't get it, what I will do is like, um, I will you uh, in cancel in this. Ah, oh yeah, of course, I zoomed in. I'll cancel this, okay. And I will open this image in, Open this image in the camera raw. So camera raw is opening in this format. But when I open JPEG file, right? Yeah, you can see how it opens the JPEG file. Okay, it opens inside Photoshop, but doesn't open inside the raw uh, camera raw. Right? But now I'm opening this file. You can see that it's opening over here. I'm going to that option, lens correction. Remember, look at this. I will just auto correct this. Okay, I'm going inside this option, lens correction. Remove chromatic aberration, enable profile correction. Oh, it's not able to un understand. Can you tell me your. Uh, where is camera? Can you tell me your uh, model number? Tell no, 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 this one. 1855, right? 1855. I think it has taken it. You see the one before it, mm -hmm. after it. Do you see the difference? Select the profile also. 
You see the Fish difference? This is how this mm. is how the picture so was. But you got to know after enabling the profile correction no, no. about. Uh, so this, this was before, well taken. Uh, this this is how it is taken. taken. Okay. This so is after correction of profile. So what what exactly happened? Do you see it? And in terms of those. Uh, it was. White it's not white balance. It's just a flat picture. We made it flat. Okay. Let's go vignetting. Okay. It removed the vignetting. It removed the distortion. See that distortion is changing. Uh, okay. Okay. Mean straight picture. This is toned. Right. So before enabling this, it was like toned, curved, mm. sides black because I was in 18 mm. So whenever the lens is in the minimum mm, mm. it creates distortion and vignetting automatically without you asking it to do it because the lens goes to its original shape when it's in 18 mm, how it is made. So we do this correction without this it looks like a round picture and you wouldn't you have not noticed it at all but it is quite clear. clear. If you see this picture again now, you will understand it much better. So this is the first picture, mm -hmm. second picture. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the uh, second picture, this is the first picture. You see that there is a round shape. But here, it's straight because I've zoomed in. When I zoom in, that vignetting and distortion goes off and creates a straight picture. Now I'm trying to adjust the second picture. Okay. Now I will cancel this. I will open the second raw file. Okay. When I'm opening the second raw file, I'm just putting on auto, making it correct, going back to that lens correction, enabling the profile correction. It doesn't know the brand, so I'm just selecting Canon. You can see that there is not much of a change here because there is no distortion here because I've zoomed in. Okay, because it's already looking straight. So the second picture you took him from the top, like this? Or no, no same, closer same actually, angle, closer. but zoomed in a bit. Zoomed in, actually. Okay, so in that case, what I'm, what is happening is now you can see that only the vignetting gets removed, but not the distortion. Okay, you can also do this manually. You can go to manual mode. You can adjust the distortion yourself and uh, the vignetting as well okay vignetting we have a separate setting for it so you don't have to worry about it here but I will tell you when we go there the next setting is FX this is where we get vignetting okay so vignetting can be any number any size okay so vignetting is nothing with the cover now if you see uh, vignetting uh, you must have seen it in uh, manage uh, photos and all where you have the candid pictures so there will be a lot of people sitting, but only those two people will be in focus. Mm -hmm. Other people will be blacked off or something. Okay. How they make it using vignetting? You can make it a darkened vignetting or a highlighted one. Okay. So uh, anything between also you can do. Is, is that vignetting or you take with a bigger aperture? No, it is vignetting. Okay. It is vignetting, you are just removing them off in this, like this way. For lightning or darkening pages. Huh. Uh, no, if if you like people take through the camera with the higher aperture, very low one point seven or two point zero uh, aperture. Uh, if you take up that aperture, uh, you get uh, you have very shallow depth of field. That is shallow depth of field. That is background the background blurriness. Background. That's yeah. different. Okay. That gives you the background blur. Then you see the background, right? Yeah. In that you cannot see the background. You don't know what background is. In, the, in that kind of photo? Yes. In, that in kind this of kind of photo, photo you still see the this background? That is called bokeh effect or okay. uh, or it's called shadow depth of field okay. effect. This is called vignetting. Vignetting is like focusing on a subject mm -hmm. and ignoring all those things. And how do you ignore the, all those things? Because when you see in the mm -hmm. marriages, right, uh, only those two people, we can ask them to come front and ask the other people to go back. Just because we want to keep yeah, them on yeah, focus, yeah. right? Okay. So what we have to do is like we have to put it in the way, camera in the way that they both are in the center of the picture. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? Come over here, enable the vignette like this. Okay. And then the midpoint also you can change. Mm -hmm. How big you want the midpoint to be. 
okay and then you can see the roundness you can make it square see that so you can make it like a square or round or a circle see the difference and also you can melt the feathers you see the feather I can make it like this okay and this is highlights how much highlight you want on that center of the picture okay so likewise you can change it you can basically change to color priority you can paint overlay how you uh, your vignetting should look like okay highlight priority so this will change accordingly choose the various options until you are satisfied okay these are grains if you have grains in your picture you can increase and decrease the size of the grains uh, you want to be added in the picture you can see that grains are there size of the grains right but who would go for that? How much roughness of the trains? So before that, you say some settings for correcting the ISO. So what is that setting? Uh, that is... Uh, uh, noise reduction. Noise reduction, yes. Okay. Uh, Dehaze is another effect which you can give. It will be like, you know, haze, right? It's going to give you an effect of haze. Like a foggy effect. Okay these are the effects tab and then here is the camera calibration so here you can adjust the reds the greens the blues in the picture you want to adjust the red colors in the picture so you know a camera takes when it takes it takes an rgb so you can adjust this rgb setting which is over here okay and then the next one is presence this is not used much this is snapshot so you like this you want to you want to you know hold this thing you want to try something else also but you don't feel like going back you know i want to come back to this in that case then i take a snapshot i take a snapshot with like test one and then i save the snapshot here and then i do some modification and then i was like oh no i want to reset so if i hold alt uh, again i will get new options here you can open a copy of it or you can reset the moment you reset it, it goes to the original value all the changes is done right now go back to snapshot restore the snapshot okay so now you have restored the original snapshot how it was before you have some tools over here uh, like color selection tool you can select a particular color all those things uh, you can change the plus or minus that color okay so you can check the amount of colors you have clear samples Okay, so likewise you can you, you have so many tools like cropping tools, selection tools and all those things, but these things are inside the Photoshop itself. Okay. So let's go back to the snapshot. Open the image. Okay. This is the problem with Photoshop. The moment you open the image, right, it takes so much time and also it takes so much memory. Okay. So for example, I'm loading another uh, big file inside this Photoshop. See that I'm just loading it. See the size of the Photoshop. See the memory stamp. It's 518 MB. Yeah. So uh, the moment you start modifying it, it becomes even higher. Okay. And when you open it again, it becomes like uh, higher again. See that it went to 700 MB. It came to 345. So it keeps increasing it okay so there will be a moment where you will get the same uh, same memory is fully occupied and will say like no memory to open more files okay so mem photoshop is memory demanding stuff okay so now you can zoom and zoom out using alt alt is a key where you have to hold your hold it all the time zoom and zoom out this is because of higher iso it's looking pretty greenish you see greenish because of higher iso setting uh, that's fun. So I'll tell you the quick uh, collection of things, the frequently used objects on the left side and what is on the right side. Uh, on the left side you have uh, the, uh, the selection key, this one is like the move tool. Okay, and then you have the selection tool, so you can select a specific uh, layer in this one. This is for, uh, this is basic selection tool, okay, this doesn't do anything, any harm to the picture, it don't crop or anything like that. This is a basic selection tool. And this is like uh, the lasso tool where you can, uh, you know, precisely select a specific objects uh, where you want to select. 
so for example you can just this is used for cutting an image like I want to specifically take a particular image and cut it off you know it, you can do with the lasso tool you can cut, cut the image in that location wherever you're selecting so likewise you can do it deselect. how do you undo it? just right click deselect or oh, control z control z huh. so Can you have history uh, z z uh, there's a you have history also you can see the history over here on the right side so wherever you have done whatever you have done ok you have the history too uh, you have uh, the quick selection quick selection is nothing but you want to specifically st select an area and you want to change the color of it so you can start it so you can just a sample of it, this is a sampling tool, so you can see that I have sampled it, anyways we will come back to that, but uh, this one quick selection to what it does is like, uh, you have selected an area, so what it you can do is like you can modify specific brightness to this area, contrast to this area, okay, likewise you can change it. We can change all the properties which is given over here. Like what are the properties which is given? Like levels of this one or highlighting, curves and color balance. Like a specific color you can increase or deselect it. Um, so quick selection. So you can go back to quick selection. Layer setting we can make a copy right before doing it. Oh uh, yeah, you can make a copy of the select layer. But we are not going to save anything. I never save my Photoshop. Oh, okay. okay. So just, just leave it like that. Okay. The other thing which I forgot to tell you is that every time you are going to save that camera raw, right, it's going to create this XMP file. It's called an XMP file. So what this XMP file will hold is like, it's a crea file created by Photoshop. So what this file holds is like the metadata information about the changes which you made. Okay. So for example, uh, I like this metadata information. Now, all I have to do is like copy paste it and then I rename another picture with this. So it was not there for 47 uh, that time. So I've loaded it right now. So whatever the information saved here is shared in 47. So when I open this 47 image, then what happens is like, it will open up with the same setting which is defined over here. It will automatically. Yeah, of course, because <coughs> the same configuration is here. I've tried it because normally uh, uh, they specifically specify the name of the file. Okay, so this setting is applied only for this file, but Photoshop doesn't do that. Okay, it says like it doesn't care about the name of the file, but it only cares about the setting. So, the moment I open this dark image inside the Photoshop, right? This image in Photoshop, you can see that it will open the same setting which we did earlier. This is 47, uh, this is 77 file, right? 4077. So we didn't do any configuration oh previously. Yeah. But still it was loading that same configuration which we did before. This is one other uh, nifty stuff you can do uh, if you want to copy and paste it for multiple settings. Because if you open it every time, right, it takes so much time. Okay, so that also you can do. Uh, and this is the selection tool, quick selection tool. Normally what we do is like we select a particular area of this picture. Like for example, uh, I want to edit this picture. There are two methods of quick selection. So now you see like the default functionality of this quick selection is plus. Okay. The other functionality of this quick selection is minus. Okay. What is plus and minus defines is like plus means add, minus means deduct. Okay. So when I just do like this, it's going to add it to the quick selection. When I hold alt, and I'm going to do on this area, it's going to deselect that particular layer. It'll be confusing in the first, but when you start doing it, it'll be much easier for you. 
Okay. Now, why we select all these areas? Now, when I'm just clicking like this, you see that it's selecting. I want to quick select it, but in a larger area. Okay. So I increase the size of this blade. Okay. You can increase the size of it. See, it's increasing over here. So uh, my area size increases. Okay. Or my direction size increases. So when you are in a, in a very um, small, when you very tiny area, so you decrease the size of it and then do that. So it's like this. So why we are selecting this this face is because uh, see there is a lot of correction we need to do on any everyone's face. Okay, but uh, with uh, see that's the difference. Um, so let me just do this. Okay, so there are a lot of corrections needs to be done over here, over here, and over. Okay, so we can do the corrections like this, or we can, what we can do is that we can blur the entire face, leave certain items in its place, and then uh, blur it off. Say, so for example, leave the lips by deselecting the lips area, only the lips area. You see that? Only the lips area we deselecting it. Is the eyes area a little bit? So these two area we are leaving. These three area one two three. These are minus, and also the outside picture, whatever is here, we are not including. And we are going to filter, blur, surface blur. Okay. So now this is the output of the image. After blurring, it looks like this. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, it's a little bit blurred. I'll show you a good image because this is with the higher ISO, so it's kind of spoiled already. But you can see this area is not blurred, but except that area, everything else is blurred. Now, I do one thing called cropping tool. The cropping tool is just for cropping the images accordingly, this is the best fit for your picture. Okay. The next tool which I'm gonna this is color sampling tool. So you can take color samples from different areas. So it will tell you which color it is. Yeah. Okay. And this is the healing brush. Healing brush basically what it does is like uh, you select a spot and then it automatically heals. Okay. So what is the use of healing tool? Heal that area. But you can see that this is not done well. Right. So what we have to do is that we have to take a tool called clone sample tool. Okay. Clone sample will take a sample of an existing location, merge it with the other location. We do a good job on that. It's a bit uh, this thing because it's going blur. Uh, this one. Clone sample. So what I'm doing is like I'm reducing the sign of the clone and just looks horrible. So we just take it from here. So it's fine. Yeah? Mm -hmm. No? Looks odd. It was like that only before. It just extended a little bit of it. No. So um it's quite challenging. Is this fine? Yeah. yeah. So likewise, you can correct this picture without spoiling so much details. So clone sampling is used for different uh, purpose also. Like for example, oh, after you this, can we use a smoothener? Oh uh, yeah. Hmm. That's what we do for hair correction and all. We won't be using a uh, cone sampler and all. What we do is like we have smudge tool. Okay, so here you have blur tool. So you don't have to go and select the blur. You just select the blur tool from here, and then you just go over and then put it on top of this one. So blur will be applied on that automatically. Okay, so we have this right. So we can just blur this out. Okay, we can also have sharpen tool. This is for sharpening the picture. You see the sharpness? Yeah? 
so you can do either blur, sharpen or smudge. Smudge is used for this hairy areas. What is this smudge? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So likewise, like you can do some funny things with that. It's nice now, right? So likewise, you can do it. So uh, these are some of the tools which you normally use. This is gradient tool. This is like eraser tool. So you don't like the background. Hmm. Select the magic eraser tool. Click on the background. Background is gone. Oh crap. So uh, till here it's gone, right? So you want to remove this rest of the things. So what you can do is and select the eraser tool and do this like this normal eraser tool but you're bored with this you don't want to do this then what you do is like you select the quick selection you know uh, and then select this area where you don't want the background to come okay you select all the area you leave his skin right and then you select the uh, eraser tool and then click on that area that's it it's gone Okay, so you can also combine two, three tools together and get the result. Okay, any questions on this? So now we cannot save it as JPEG, right? We can, we can export it as PNG. Yeah, PNG. PNG, not uh, as JPEG. Uh, JPEG is, doesn't support the transparent background. So you can go to, go to File, Export, Export As. And then you here you have PNG with transparency. So click on export all. And then basically what it does is like it saves a picture in the JPEG uh, exported format. Oh no, 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 I didn't it's not intentional. Okay, so you get a JPEG image. So sorry. <laughs> So yeah, something like that. So one of the recent picture I've edited without the background is this one. This took so much time and patience. So this one. So you see that it's completely edited without background. There was nothing, you know, there's nothing on the bottom as well. Like there is no background. Same nothing. tool we use it. Ah, same tool, same Photoshop. What a format is that? PNG. PNG format. So you get in PNG format only. Okay, but you can export this PNG format to JPEG also later. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when you put it on anywhere, it looks nice. So this is one of the uh, signature I created without background. Okay. Any questions till now? No. Okay, I'll tell you how to create a signature using Photoshop. Click on New, select anything like a default photo size or something. Okay, so you got the background, right? Now crop it according to the size you want. You don't want this big for your signature, right? Signature is something which you would do in case if you want to have uh, a photo. You, you are creating a lot of photos, right? You are taking a lot of pictures. And you want to add your watermarks to your photo. Okay, so you add a signature there. Okay, the signature should be transparent. As in like it will go according to the background of your picture. Okay, now if you see the signature, it's quite transparent, right? It has two different colors, three different colors, uh, in fact. So you have the G as a gold, and I as a red, and the other one is as a black. So why we give three combinations of colors is like sometimes the picture might be in dark background or light background. So either of the background, some of your, some or little of your logo should be visible. That's why we give it like this. Okay. So first thing is like open a um, normal one, select uh, uh, the um, select the text one okay so here you select the size of the text uh, select it normally it comes in white color don't be scared uh, so change the color of this okay some font comes with the default color itself like for example 
the fonts like this guy sample right so this guy comes with the uh, default uh, stuff start with the new text okay so uh, let's say this is the word so you can select a uh, different color with your I think this is not the font so like this you can get it so some you can change the color here this you cannot change because you have to change it here so I have to select this one and change the color right so likewise so I got this one selected so first letter is done let's go to the next letter the next letter is should we type something under some uh, description or anything it could be okay so you choose a different font for it so you just take this one and type some, something over here Something is wrong. Mm, it's going now. Okay, I'm having a random character and I'm just reducing the size of it so that it fit my bill. Um, so I'm just going to drag this. So I've just put it there. So just use this tool to drag this guy wherever you would like. Okay. So make this guy middle or on the side, on the edge. This, or you can make him this side. However you feel which is comfortable for you, which looks good. Okay. You can even drag this guy up there. Yeah. So once you're comfortable that this is how it's gonna be okay then what you do is that you crop it more more cropping means more headache for you okay uh, sorry less headache for you not more. okay now you have selected this location you have selected yeah. this particular stuff so create a new layer so all this let it be there create a new layer which has a no background normally all the layers this in our background okay so unlock this so basically what you're gonna do is like you want to use your eraser magic eraser tool to click on this uh, yeah i think we are on this you have to select this layer and do this so click on the magic erase tool and click on this so you can see that my complete background is gone this is very simple way of removing your background there is no other simple way of removing your background rather than this just click on the layer magic erase tool click on the whites and all whites are gone okay now crop it even more which makes it nicer right then you can crop it a little bit more we can only this thing okay do some final adjustment if you want to do a little bit more adjustment to the picture make it nice right this is good right so take this this thing if you feel that's good same thing export it to a export export as uh, a png close it
So you have your background ready. Okay. Okay. What could I have done to increase the pixels? Increase the size of this. I mean, the, the quality of this image while saving. Uh, so it's blurring when I'm zooming, right? Yeah, it's not for zooming. It's an icon. Remember, you cannot zoom an icon because we have cropped it to a smaller level. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do that, you want a bigger size, right? So okay, instead of, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, just click on new, same thing, same thing, uh, here, this gima you're typing, right? Type it in a larger font, make it 72, and type, uh, select that font, okay? So now you have a bigger resolution. Even you can go for uh, uh, one. Okay. Okay. Now you have selected in a bigger font. Now what you do is that you crop this image again, you can see that it's half of that image, mm -hmm. right? So you get a bigger font. Now use the eraser tool to erase your... Okay, let's select it, export it as a JPEG. Oh, sorry, uh, it's a PNG. Demo. And then open this one. Now you see less damage when you scroll over. You have a bigger image now. The same thing. But we normally use it as an icon. See the difference between that and this? It starts with a bigger image itself. Okay? What is the difference between that and this is like when you're importing into the Lightroom because you cannot add this um, signature to every picture like 100 pictures if you have you cannot add this signature to all the pictures we're opening in Photoshop okay the best way of doing it is Lightroom okay I'll tell you how to do that okay so let's close this one let's close this Photoshop tool let's open Lightroom too okay so Lightroom these are some of uh, you can do exactly what you can do in Photoshop but not as detailed as you can do in Photoshop okay so Lightroom can only help you in little bit not too much first thing is like importing stuff to Lightroom so first uh, we will delete all these stuff uh, let's remove photo remove okay let's go back to my my memory card Yes, you need to make a bigger of uh, this one. So I need to create once again? Okay? Yes, you need to create in a bigger resolution. Okay. So I can't enlarge the same one? No, you can't. You will lose pixel because it is a smaller file, right? So you can, you can create a big one in the beginning itself and uh, you can compress it to a smaller one. Okay. okay, rather than creating a small one and then making it bigger, it's not possible, but Make a big one in the beginning and compress it to a small one while uploading as a signature. So can I save that first as a bigger one? Yeah, but also there will be some problems if you save it as a bigger one and compress it too much. Little. There will be also some problem. Okay. Uh, I will show you. Okay. So now what we are doing is like we are opening this with the Lightroom. Okay. okay. Um, so just drag all the pictures mm. to the Lightroom. All these files are like 23 MB files. 23 so in, MB. Uh, Lightroom, even J JPEG files can be done. Ah, JPEG also can be done. NEF also can be done. Okay, I'm importing this, all these files into this one. So whatever I have dragged and dropped, only that is getting imported. Okay. Okay. So you can Not edit huh. multiple images. Yes. 
now? This is Lightroom. Lightroom. Mm -hmm. It's loading the images, so let it load. How much memory is it taking? It takes nominal memory because it doesn't do much of the Photoshop thing. So you can see that it loaded somewhere around 20 files, so mm -hmm. it's uh, not causing fine. Okay, it's going to 800, 600, 872. Okay, that's it. Uh, so it goes behind uh, uh, 800 to 700 MB of memory, mm -hmm. not beyond that. Okay, it's not going to 1 GB also. So I've opened it all the files, which is over here. Okay, not all the files will be good. Okay, so they have three options here. You can compare, you can view individual pictures, you can compare two pictures, you can, you can see two, three pictures like this okay so your options in library library is just for a, a you know a very basic functionality you can do which you can see over here only order tuning and stuff like this okay. okay basic functionality in lightroom and you will see the histogram here okay the next thing is um, you can um, rate the pictures also if you like something uh, it's, you know, no use so here what we have to do is like you can uh, double click each picture to you know see it in a bigger screen whether it is uh, focused or not okay so this background is focused not the not much of a foreground so select the file which is focused uh, delete the file which is not focused this is not focused delete it remove it delete it remove it okay so likewise for select all the files which is focused and not focused okay so once you figure out the files which is focused and not focused then you can select and remove it so these are not focused this is not focused so it takes time sometimes to load the image in the actual clarity but you can uh, clearly see the picture is focused or not by zooming in okay so this is the first primary things you can do with the Lightroom second thing is like you can edit a single picture like Photoshop so select a picture if you like okay so this is a bit dark picture right select the picture and go to develop mode in develop mode you will get the exact same options like Photoshop but not intense options but then very basic options you can see the highlight shadows whites blacks and everything okay and clarity vibrance and the illumination saturation hue split toning details sharpening right noise reduction all these things cam camera calibrations everything you will be able to see so here you just take it to uh, something which is nice okay and then go to the correction make it auto so that uh, people are visible this is too dark image, so it's spoiled, so remove this. Uh, we can do this auto correction here. It's nice now, right? So uh, we can do this one. Settings to vivid. it. This looks nice, right? So I want to only update this picture. Seeing this picture, all the other pictures should be updated. Okay. So go back to library. Okay. Uh, when you go back to library, you will get all the pictures over here. And you click this option. Okay, so select all the pictures, Control A, and highlight one picture. You see this one is highlighted than this one. Now this one is highlighted. This one is highlighted now. Now I want to copy the same settings to everyone else. It's called Sync Settings. Okay, the moment I click on Sync Setting, and then I set Synchronize. Okay, then all the available property of this setting will be shared to everyone. You can see everything is bright enough right you understand what it is now so now what you want to do is like uh, you're happy with this you don't want any any more editing because there's nothing to concentrate on a person and edit their faces right because it's an even picture okay so now I go back to this one I select all and I click on export okay export okay so now I can give a specific folder for this to be exported okay I choose a folder I uh, go to the same uh, uh, drive H colon DCMI 5300 select the folder it's creating a subfolder called exported small I'm going to change this exported small to exported final 
okay so once i create this exported final folder it's going to put all these files into that folder now before that right i can rename the file names okay i can uh, include a video file in this which is not needed i can change the quality of the exported files i can make it to one quality or 100 quality one means the least amount of uh, data it can save 100 means the maximum it can save you can limit the files according to the size also but that's not recommended to do that because some files needs like more than 100 kb to create okay so it will fail if you put it at 100 kb and uh, you can resize it but also it is not recommended because sometimes you will take in portrait sometimes you will take in landscape when you resize it, it becomes like box but what about the portrait picture half of the top will be cut only the box will remain okay so you should not do this way you can adjust the resolution by pixel okay you say 250 240 you can sharpen the image you can save the metadata metadata means camera information which camera it was clicked on what resolution manual mode automatic mode all those metadata water marking so this is where we are into water marking is in like what kind of a logo will be attached to this stuff so click on this and edit watermark so you can see that you can load your own watermark like you have just designed one right remember big one so i put it over here i can change the location of this i can change the opacity like the transparency for it i can change uh, uh, how big you want this to be okay or you want it to be fit fill proportional okay you can set it like where you want it to be you want to keep it in the middle you want to keep it in the left corner right corner top right top left top right like that you can you can even customize it also okay so all these option is there you can even rotate the image like this also you can put it on the wall okay so all these options are possible in lightroom so let me choose my own uh, logo uh, which is in uh, ecolon photography and uh, signs and this is uh, one of our logo which i've created um this is one this one transparent this is what transparent oh i've saved it already so uh, we can save all these logos over here so we can just quick select it top left 50% optimizey and then i click on export now all those pictures that exporting will export with my logo you see that each one is exporting is exporting 24 files here so i can just go over here how long will this take uh, this process of exporting 10 minutes not even 10 minutes depends on the size you export it see it's files? like 11 mb for how many files 1 mb it takes about 10 15 seconds okay one file takes 15 seconds But if I'm exporting from 50 MB file, when I'm exporting from the D800, which creates 50 MB file, it takes even longer. Okay. So when I open the file, you can see that the logo is here. It's sort of invisible, but still there. Right. Yeah. Any questions? You can do the same thing in Photoshop as well, or only in? We can do it, but it takes time, na. No? One by one file only you can edit it. That's the problem with Photoshop. You have to uh, when we are editing it, each file we are editing it. Like say, for example, ten file we are editing it. First, you have to open the cam camera raw, open each file. Okay, and then it opens inside Photoshop. All these ten files. It takes about ten minutes to open inside. Okay, because it takes rows, 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 and open inside that. 
And once you open that, you do the modification, close it, mm -hmm. and then it will ask you whether you want to export it or not. Then you export it, click yeah. on save a JPEG, yeah. and then create a new one, and then save it, and it will take uh, about 10 15 seconds to save the JPEG. And then in the meantime, you go to another JPEG, start editing that, add the signature, think about how much time you want to do. Now you just right click, export, and you select a bulk option, that's it, it's exporting automatically. Okay, so this is like uh, the faster method of doing it. Uh, that is like the slower method, but also very few. Uh, Even if you do some auto correction in one of the image, it uh, will automatically replicate. Ah, that's what we did, na? Sync settings. So that way we can uh, sync the synchro synchronize. Why I'm asking is that one image could be darker, the other image could be lighter. Ah, then you need to select group of images. The darker that's pictures right. you need to select first. That's right. Edit it, leave it like that. Okay. Then you take the lighter picture, select it. Edit it, sync the settings for the, uh, those settings, leave it, and then all together export it, one shot. So it's done now, task completed. So uh, you can see all the pictures are here. And all the pictures is having. The bottom mark. Okay, so we need to lot of do a lot of cropping over here, but I don't have patience right now to do it. But yeah, this is how you have to export it, and this is how you have to uh, get the Photoshop and Lightroom done. Any questions? Very clear. The softwares are in here, uh, so just uh, please take care of this. Just copy it to your laptop or system. Give me in the yeah, he will copy it and give you in the pen drive. Yes. Mm -hmm. I cannot do that, but I don't know why the software is not. Mm -hmm.